Hi, my name is Chris Atkins. I'm the coordinator of the Minnesota Artist Exhibition Program, and I'd like to welcome you to A Constant Line, new work by Cheryl Melander and Don Myrie. Cheryl Melander's work, which is comprised of works on paper, wire wall installation, and drawings on panel, are all interested in different notions of memory. How stories are passed from one person to the next, and the inaccuracies in that transmission. Don Myrie's sculptures, which are made out of fiberglass but also include videos, are also interested in memory, but more so as the tangible objects and souvenirs of specific events from his life. The way I manufacture the pieces relates to the concept of the piece. I think a lot about choice of materials and how they can sort of support the concept of, of the work. One of them is the fiberglass astronaut inside of um, what appears to be like a great big refrigerator with a glass door on it. This piece I um, modeled a, a, an astronaut basically from memory and from a small toy. And then it was laser scanned and then uh, made it into a full size person, so about 70 inches tall. I was interested in the idea of sort of like this heroic figure kind of relegated to more of a memory uh, shell of of who he really was. There's a little bit of a disappointment knowing that all this effort is going to preserve this thing that is nothing that it ever was, but here it is now in this preserved state. The piece in the iceberg has a 12-foot mountain that has a cave-like on the inside and Walt Disney's head is inside of that. There's a projected kind of video that suggests that he's kind of in a REM state of sleep. His eyes are kind of moving and his mouth is twitching. And again, I think it's sort of maybe a deifying of an individual historical figure, but on a different level. It's sort of bringing him to a, a heroic state. And it kind of relates to the sort of folklore that goes with Walt Disney that, you know, of course, that he was cryogenically frozen and he's going to be brought back sometime later in the future. The work is intended to be looked at from different vantage points, different angles. and. There's no uh, real hidden story behind any of the works that I, I appreciate people enjoying the objects, just that they're interesting objects. And I like that people may find them fun and have a little bit of folly in them. I think that's really important to the work too. It started to occur when I was looking at, at migration patterns and thinking about if animals received some type of inherited or genetic memory that we must also. And so I was really starting to become interested in that in 2004, this idea of inherited memory and the way that we construct memory and that it's fluid and that it's not stable and that every time we recall something, we recall it in a slightly different way. Because we are in a highly technological era, we are seeking something that is very authentic. Because even in the framing of a, of a photograph or framing of television, we are still getting a perception. We're getting a, a altered perception of the real. There's 11 panels where I've layered resin on clayboard, The War of the Whispers. That piece, I think, is really significant as it challenges, I think, two-dimensionality, where the line actually becomes three-dimensional as it's layered between these thin layers of resin. The wrapped wire form is this idea that we wrap this construct of our identity mm -hmm. around ourselves. The line is a construction of self. This protective layer, the core, is mm -hmm. the essence of who we truly are. <laughs> 